First Peter chapter 5 and verse 1. We're going to begin tonight's message. I, I've been doing some serious studying through some of what I would call some of the greatest poetry ever written. I don't know how many of you are really into poetry or whatnot, but I've been doing some deep studying into stuff like that. And uh, one of my favorite poets of all time, I'm not sure who he is, but he wrote this poem that I'll be preaching on tonight as an illustration called Humpty Dumpty. Um, I don't know how many of you find that as deep poetry, but I was homeschooled, so that something like that really hits home for me. So we're going to be taking that tonight as an illustration. We're going to be, I'm going to be giving you what God gave me through that. I hope it's a help to you. Let's go ahead and read 1 Peter chapter 5, and verse 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not, say hold on. All righty, here we go. I think I heard a hold on, but I'm going to go anyway. For, uh, <laughs> chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, The elders which are among you I exhort, who I am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble." Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Somebody say amen right there. And this will be my key verse tonight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let's pray. Dearly, Father, I come unto you, Lord. I'm asking you, God, to help me tonight. Lord, there's no magic message. Lord God, there's no magic verse I can pull out of my hat. Lord God, there's no magic uh, uh, scripture or no magic illustrations I can use tonight, God, to help somebody in here. But Lord, I know there's people who need help. So Lord, I'm asking you to do is do tonight what I cannot do. Lord, meet with me tonight. Give me the power of God, the passion of liberty, and use me according to your will. Hide me behind the cross. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for Standing. Now, we've all heard the nursery rhyme that goes with Humpty Dumpty. It says, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Now, tonight, what we're going to do, I wasn't just homeschooled, but I was homeschooled in a Christian family, so we was taught to spiritualize everything. So tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to spiritualize Humpty Dumpty a little bit. We find in the first part of the nursery rhyme, it says, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Now, I don't know much about y'all, but in the Humpty Dumpty nursery rhymes that had color pages in it. Humpty Dumpty was an egg. So I imagine if Humpty Dumpty was a man who was shaped like an egg living in a kingdom, he probably was looked down on just a little bit. He was probably the weird guy in town, probably the guy didn't nobody pay much attention to. Can anybody say you've ever felt down, felt like nobody cared about you, felt like you was all alone in your sin, all alone in your sorrow, all alone in your issues, all alone in what you're going through? I imagine that's how this man, Humpty Dumpty, must have felt in this kingdom full of people. Now we see we come across this wall, and I don't know exactly what a wall would be to you, but Humpty Humpty Dumpty found a way for himself to finally be above everybody else. He found a way for himself to finally be on top of something. He found a way for himself to finally feel good about himself. He found something that gave him what he felt like was purpose. What he felt like was meaning. See, this wall didn't come with any caution tape. This wall didn't come with any warnings. It didn't come with an instruction manual. All he knew is that when he saw it, he wanted to get to the very top of it so he could be higher up than everybody else. Let me tell you something tonight. Sin doesn't come with a warning. Sin doesn't come with caution tape. Sin doesn't come to you saying, I want to destroy your marriage. Sin doesn't come to you saying, I want to make you a drug addict. Sin doesn't come to you saying, I want alcohol to take your children, take your wife wife, take your family, and take your happiness. That is not how sin approaches. Sin approaches as your best friend. Sin approaches as someone that loves you, something that cares about you, something to help you, something to make your life better, to take the edge off, to make it easier. That's how sin always approaches. But we understand there's more to the nursery rhyme. It says that Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Now before we go any further, I want to say that before Humpty Dumpty ever sat down in that wall, first he had to see the wall. You want to know where our biggest problem comes is we see what looks like a good idea. 
We see something that looks fun. We see something that looks enjoyable. And the Bible even says, as Preacher Tyler said this morning, there's pleasure in sin but for a season. We see the sin. We see our reckoning. We see what looks like a great idea, what looks like fun, what looks like could bring us some joy, what looks like could bring us some happiness. And when we see it, here's where we mess up. There is no sin in seeing your sin, but there is a sin in focusing on the sin. When Humpty Dumpty saw the wall, he had one of two choices. He could turn around and walk the other direction or he could approach the wall and climb up it. Now it didn't seem like a bad idea at the time, but like I said, we go on. Now, you see, the Bible shows us something, a little something about sin. In Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1, it tells us, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now, first of all, Humpty Dumpty had to be walking along his way before he saw this wall and then sin stopped him in his place and he came to a point he was sitting on the wall sin has a blueprint on how to slow down a Christian in its walk first thing it does the Bible commands us to run the race with all our might the first thing sin does it says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly whenever we catch ourselves quit running the race and we start walking in the race and we start slowing down we start saying we need to quit giving so much quit doing so much quit trying so hard for God I deserve a break I deserve a little time to myself I deserve to be treated better that's when we're on our path to be sitting on the wall the Bible says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the God the next part says nor standeth in the way of the sinners Whenever you start walking for God, that's when it's a whole lot easier to notice what's going around you. I don't know how many of you know this about me. Not all of you know me that well. But I used to be really big into lifting weights. Now let me make that clear. I picked things up and I put them down. I did not run. If you saw me running, you better run too. There's something big back there. I don't like running. It hurts. It makes me feel weird. It makes my legs feel like jelly. I wasn't a big fan of it. And I remember I heard somebody tell me one time, they gave me this advice. They said, biggest lie I was ever told. If you go run outside, the environment is so beautiful, it takes your mind off what you're doing. I didn't notice one tree. All I could think about was I'm about to die. You see, when I was running, I didn't notice anything around me. All I knew was I'm running. And I'm trying to get from point A to point B. But when I quit running and I started walking, then I could see what was going on around me. See, when we quit running for God and we start walking, that's when we notice what's going on around us. That's when we notice the sin. That's when we notice the opportunities. That's when we start saying, well, so-and-so over there gets treated better than me. That's when we start gossiping a little bit. That's when we have time to start doing other things, letting our minds get away from God. That's what happens when we start walking is we can start noticing what's going on around us. And when we quit focusing on the goal and on the path we're on and we start focusing on what's around us we are bound to end up stopping blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly nor standeth in the way of the sinners now when you get to the standing point that is a very dangerous place to be because you have one or two decisions to make that will affect you for the rest of your life start running again or start going to something different I remember one time back when I was still picking things up and putting them down a lot me and preacher Caleb got this really good idea to go run a 5K. And it was called the Warrior Dash. See, there was all these obstacles in it. And me and him was totally prepared and ready for 100 obstacles. Nobody told me I'd have to run that much. I thought I'd just get to climb a bunch of ladders. Well, we get out there and we run and we run and we run and we run. And let me tell you, I'm glad he was in better shape than I was or else I'd have just stopped and turned around and went back. Because there came a point I said, okay, we got to quit running. I can't do it anymore. Let's walk a little bit. And we started walking a little bit. Next thing I know, I said, okay, look, I know you're skinny and I know you're doing good. Stop. Stop. When I say let's quit running, that means stop. Don't start walking. Stop. I need a break. I'm about to die and I'm fat. Stop. <laughs> so we stopped for a little bit. You know what the hardest thing was to do once I stopped? Start running again. Oh, Lord God. See, me and him had this really good strategy that if we just took off really hard from the get-go, we'd get through it a whole lot faster. That was stupid. 
We made it about three quarters of the way through and I had to stop. Now see, I kept on running. But it was because somebody there with me was encouraging me to keep on running. You don't always have somebody with you. You don't have a little angel on your shoulder telling you what's right and what's wrong. You sometimes are by yourself and alone in these situations. And when you stop running and you come to a standstill, you alone have a choice to make to put your eyes back on the path, keep on running, or stop and take a better look around. See, Humpty Dumpty, he quit running. He stopped and he started taking a look around. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Humpty Dumpty had quit running and started walking. He quit walking and started standing. And the next thing we know, he's climbed up this wall and now he is sitting. Sin's blueprint to take a Christian out simply is to slow them down until they quit. Let me give you a little charge right here. Christian, don't you quit. Don't you quit on God. Don't you give up. Don't slow down. Keep on moving. I know it's hard. I know it's rough. I know the devil swings at you with everything he can. Sometimes life comes at you with more than you can handle. Sometimes you get ready to throw in the towel and quit. I get ready to throw in the towel and quit. Our pastors get ready to throw in the towel and quit. But let me tell you what makes a difference in a Christian and a fake is when they keep that towel in their hands and they keep on running. Don't you give up on God. Don't you give up on your race. God calls you to run keep on running child of God don't give up on him yet the next part of the nursery rhyme says Humpty Dumpty had a great fall as I said earlier the Bible tells us there is pleasure in sin but for a season See, being up on that wall seemed like a great idea. Being up on that wall was fun for a little bit. Being up on that wall had its perks for a little while. But there came a point, he sat there so long, he got comfortable in his position. He got comfortable where he was at. And when we get comfortable in our sin, that is when sin turns into the bad guy. Sin wants to be your best friend all the way up to the point you feel comfortable. And whenever you get comfortable believing that you can control your sin and you can handle the issues you're in and you can handle when you climb up and climb down to that wall, that is when sin becomes the big, dark, scary creature that entraps you and holds you there. The Bible says Humpty Dumpty had a great false sea. It seemed like a good idea. It seemed like a great idea. He was enjoying his time on the wall. He was enjoying the perks of being there. But there came a point when he fell off that wall. Now see, here's what happens when you fall is you get broken. He fell off that wall with all the best intentions of the world of climbing up there. And now he's on the ground, broken into pieces, not knowing what to do with his life. I don't know how many of you have been there, but I can raise my hand and say I have. I've been in that place where I climbed up that wall. I thought I could handle it. I thought I could control it. Next thing I know, I got a little comfortable. I thought I was the baddest man alive. I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought I'm too spiritual to mess up. I'm too good to mess up. I'm the preacher's kid. I'm the preacher's brother. I'm a worship leader. I'm a Sunday school teacher. I'm the youth leader. I'm the administrator. I'm at church every Sunday morning. I'm there every Sunday night. I'm there every Wednesday night. I went during the revival services. We start getting this idea we're a little bit better than the situation we're in we think we're a little bit stronger than sin is and about the time we think we got it under control we fall to the ground and break ourselves you thought it was hard to start running before when you stopped try running when you were broken Humpty Dumpty couldn't get up He couldn't do nothing with himself. He is a little broken man living a life of despair because he no longer has that purpose in life anymore. The one thing that brought him some joy, the one thing that brought him some peace, the one thing that made him feel good about himself is the same thing that broke him. Let me tell you, child of God, you be careful with that sin you're dabbling in. You be careful with that pornography. Don't you be looking at that. I know that's not a famous thing to preach on and it ain't real popular. You listen to me, child of God. You get out of that stuff before that stuff gets you. You think a little preacher, Tyler preached on this this morning. I'm going to go ahead and just re-preach it all I want. You you think that social drinking ain't going to hurt you? You think that little bit of flirting ain't going to hurt you? You think that little issue ain't going to hurt you? Child of God, that sin will grab you up faster than you can realize and it will drag you down. And the one thing you thought made your life okay, the one thing you thought made life complete, the one thing you thought brought you joy will be the exact thing to tear you down and break you. 
Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty back together again. You see, whenever I broke myself and I fell and I was broken, I tried my dead level best to fix what I had done. I tried, Brandon. I tried reading my Bible more. I tried praying a little bit more. I tried being a little more active in church. I, I tried listening to a lot more preaching. I tried listening to a lot more good singing. I tried those things. You know what? I went to my friends about it. I went to my family about it. I went to my pastor about it. You know, I did all these things, and I tried to fix it in all sorts of different ways, and everybody copes a little differently when they get broken. Some people try to climb the wall again. Some people think if they can just get back on top, they'll be okay again. I can handle the drink. I can handle the smoke. I can handle the pornography. I can handle the situation. And we try to find all these things out there we think can fix us, and we think can make us better but all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again what makes you think you can put yourself back together we go to everything we know every avenue we can find I started thinking about all the grandma religion I'd heard growing up just take it to Jesus you know what, I tried taking it to Jesus, but it's hard going when you're broken because sometimes you got so much shame on you, you can't raise your head to pray. You know what, sometimes going to Jesus when you're broken is a whole lot harder than going to anybody else. Because see, the truth is, we know within reason nobody else can fix us. We know within reason that joint ain't going to fix it. We know that bottle's not going to fix it. We know that pornography's not going to fix it. We know gossip ain't going to, oh yeah, I said gossip in a Baptist church, y'all hold on tight. We know gossip ain't going to fix it. We know all the stuff we can go to isn't going to fix it. But it's a whole lot easier to try to fix it yourself. I remember one time I was cutting grass in my dad's yard. And uh, see, I hate cutting grass. I despise it. I think it's of the devil. I know in heaven it's streets of gold and it's all paved with gold because there ain't no grass because somebody have to cut it. I hate it. And I remember one time he made me go cut the grass and I had this bright idea that if I put the deck on one, the lowest it'll go. Then when I cut it, I won't have to cut it again for a long time. So I started cutting the grass, and I didn't pay no attention to what I was doing. Next thing I knew, I ran over this big root out of a tree. And when I say it warped the deck and broke the blades and destroyed everything else, oh, it destroyed it. It did it to it. You know what I did? I parked that lawnmower back where I got it, got off, and didn't say a word. I tried to fix it myself. I thought maybe if I take a hammer and just try to beat it back into the form it was before I ran over that thing, it'll be okay. And I did all these little things I could to it, and it didn't fix a thing. In fact, it made it worse. When my dad finally found out I did it, I wasn't home, and I wasn't home for about five days. That was the grace of Jesus because he told me had I been home, he'd have made me go outside and fix it. He'd been beating me while I was fixing it. It's a whole lot easier to try to fix something yourself than it is to take it to Jesus. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. One time, I was at our pastor's house cutting his grass. Now, his wasn't as bad because he had one of them cool zero-turn lawnmowers. You know, the kind you control with the handles and you're standing on the little deck. It just goes wherever you tell it to. And I remember, before I'd ever started cutting grass with it, they told me, you better be careful. It'll throw you off. And I cut grass all summer long with that thing. And you know what? It never threw me off once. I was a lawnmower rock star. <laughs> Throw me off. you got to be kidding me. I knew to bend my knees when I made sharp turns. Oh, man, I had it going on. One day I was going to put it up. And uh, when I did, you have to squeeze the handles, lock both brakes. I accidentally locked one. And then I let go. So next thing I know, instead of this lawnmower stopping, it's spinning around and around and around uncontrollably really, really fast. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I started panicking a little bit. And that was back in them days when I picked things up and put them down a lot. So you know what I said I'm going to do? I said I'm going to jump off this deck, I'm going to plant my feet in the ground, and I'm going to stop this thing. No, I did not. I jumped off, planted my feet into the ground, and half a second later, it's got me running around and around with it because I'm not strong enough to stop it. Next thing I know, it has completely picked me up off the ground, swinging me in midair around and around and around, and I get slung down the driveway. 
And all I could think about was it was spinning around and around and around in between Caleb's Mustang and the pastor's Suburban. Oh, my gosh. I knew I had made up my mind. I was getting up, going to the garage, getting a hammer, and beating it to death. I could afford a lawnmower quicker than I could afford two cars. I get up. I take off running to get to the lawnmower. Just when I get there, I realize it's not running anymore. See, it had a safety feature in it to where if I just let go, it would take care of the problem on its own. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But they never said nothing about the king in that nursery rhyme. You see, when Humpty Dumpty picked up what was left of himself and he quit trying to fix his problem on his own and he picked up his broken self, he picked up his broken pieces and he carried them to the king and dropped them at his feet and he let go of his problems, he let go of his issues, he let go of the steering wheel and he gave it to the king. The king immediately was able to fix him just by letting go. Child of God, you don't have to hold that sin. You don't have to hold that issue. You can let Jesus Take the will of your life and he'll control it for you. Jesus is waiting for you to hand it over to him. Humpty Dumpty went through all these issues. He went through all these problems trying his best to steer it in the right direction. Trying his best to sit and be comfortable in his sin and control it. And when he got broken, he tried to pick himself up and carry himself. He tried to pick himself up and fix it. But what he didn't realize, even though the king's horses and the king's men had tried, if he would have just carried himself to the king of kings and the lord of lords, God Almighty, the sweet rose of shepherd, child of God, he can fix you. He can make you better. He can give you peace. He can find you joy. There is a love that this world cannot reproduce in Jesus. When I took my problems to the king, he fixed them. But all I had to do was just let go. When I let go and let God, I was able to live again. But see, here's the problem. You have to understand, no matter how broken you are, there ain't no other solution than Jesus. I'll make you a deal. You keep trying to fix you your way. Call me in 20 years and let me know how it's going. I gave mine to Jesus. Am I perfect? Heck no. Will I ever be perfect? Absolutely not. But there is a God Almighty above who loves me and cares about me and believes in me and prays for me and roots for me. It makes me feel really good to know that the God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords is my biggest fan. He's up in heaven right now. He's pulling for me. I believe he's got on a Team Josh robe. He's up there cheering for me, pulling for me, rooting for me, loving me, caring about me, hoping I succeed, hoping I win, cheering for me. Run that race, son. Run to the end. Get there. Don't slow down. Don't quit running. Don't start walking. Don't stop. Go, go, go. And child of God, He's doing the same for you. He loves you. He died for you. He's rooting for you. God of heaven is your biggest fan. Don't fail Him. He's pulling for you. All of you know, I'm a really big Alabama fan. Roll Tide, Jesus. And this year, the Devils team, the Clemson Tigers, they kind of put a beat down on us. Y- y'all did hear me say the Devils team, right? Just making sure y'all heard that. You know what? As much as I love Alabama, they let me down. They just didn't do right, Brandon. They didn't play right. Shut up, Brandon. They didn't play right. But you want to know something? Even though they messed up, You know what I put on the next morning? I put on my Alabama t-shirt. You know why? Because I live in the heart of some of them Clemson fans. And I wanted every one of them to know, I don't care if y'all beat us a thousand to nothing. I'm still an Alabama fan. And I ain't ashamed of them either. You know what makes me feel good? Even when I, God Almighty, even when I was broken, even when I was down and I had to pick up what was left of my messed up self and carry it to Jesus. It was hard to get there. It was hard to confront Him. But when I got there and I said, God, I messed up. God, I failed you. God, I quit running. God, I stopped. I'm so sorry. You know what He did? He said, it don't matter. I'm still your biggest fan. I'm still pulling for you. I'm still rooting for you, Trevor. I'm still pulling for you, Graham. I believe in you. Get back 
back up. I can fix you, but keep on running. It's not over yet. I believe that he loves me with all his heart and that he still pulls for me to this day. And you know what's going to happen if I mess up tomorrow, Brandon, and have to take my broken self back to him? He's still going to be wearing that Team Josh robe. You know what happens if I mess up the next day, Andy? Team Josh. You know what happens if I mess up next year, Graham? He's Team Josh. You know what happens if I mess up again that next year, Trevor? He's still Team Josh. No matter how many times I mess up, the Bible tells me where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Let me tell you something. Sin took me farther than I wanted to go, kept me longer than I wanted to stay, and it cost me more than I wanted to pay. But Jesus has taken me to places I've never been before. He's held me close by His side, and it didn't cost me a dime. I thank God I serve a Jesus who even when sin takes control of my life, when He steps on the scene, sin has no choice but to fly. Because the God of heaven, He is the King of sin. He rules it. He banishes it. When light steps in, darkness must go. He's still rooting for me. All this month, our pastor's been doing a series about not letting the devil win. And you know what? I like that one verse he used. That main verse said, He's praying for me. He's pulling for me. He's rooting for me. Child of God, you listen to me. I know what it's like to mess up. I know what it's like to give in to the sin. I know what it's like to stop running and walking. I know what it's like to stop walking and being still. And I know what it's like to climb that wall thinking I'm better than everybody else and getting all comfortable in my sin. But don't you let that wall convince you that you're broken for good. Because God's real good at fixing the broken ones. And boy, I'm glad about that. I'm telling you, I'm messed up. I got issues. I got problems. I got things that run through my mind all the time. I can thank God. I wish I'd have never done that. I got things that happened in my life that I pray and ask God to forgive me to this day that I did five years ago. I've done some things I regret. I've done some things I wish I wouldn't have. But the God of heaven, He's able to look past all that and see something else. He's able to look past all that and see someone else. He sees that He might have messed up. He might have lost that battle. He might have given up that time but that's still my favorite son and I hope you feel the same way but I believe that I'm God's favorite because of all the mercy he shows all the grace he gives me and he said even though he messed up even though he sinned even though he failed I'm still team Josh I'm still team Trevor I'm still team Fred no matter how far down you go there's no depth that the hand of God cannot reach down and pull you out 